And great to have joining us today on our Book Talk segment, the New York Times best-selling author, Tammy Hogue, whose book, The Bitter Season, did incredibly well when it came out in hardcover earlier this year. Now, now out in paperback coming up this week. It's called The Bitter Season, great uh, crime novel. We'll find out all about it. And Tammy Hogue joined us by telephone today. Tammy, great to talk with you. How are you? Oh, I'm wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations, first of all, on the, the success of the uh, of the hardcover. I guess that's, that's the biggest obstacle, right? Getting those hardcovers sold first. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, this book, I had a chance to read through. Now, I don't like to give too much away when I read a novel, so I won't, but uh, it's, it's a great crime novel and involves uh, a detective duo that uh, I guess your readers really enjoy reading about, right? Nikki Liska and Sam Kovac. Yeah, yeah, I've uh, written about them. I think this is their sixth book um, that I've written about them. Never set out to write a series, but they kept coming back to me, so... <laughs> Well, yeah, when and, you, when you came them. up with those characters originally, like you said, you don't think of it maybe as a series at the time. What, what made it? Uh, what made you write about them the second time? Yeah, yeah. The first time, um, you know, they were necessary to the to the telling of that first story. They weren't the main characters, but they, I needed I needed detectives uh, to to uh, further the story along, and these two popped up. You know, really, just literally. Uh, right before my eyes as I was writing, and um, and I just I really enjoyed them. I enjoyed their their banter back and forth, and I I just I liked the way they looked at things. And you know, when I finished that book, I just I really wanted to spend more time with them and uh, kind of explore where they might lead me. You know, when you have two characters like that, you actually obviously you have to think like two different types of people, right? So that, that's a bit of a challenge for a writer, I would think, to have that. I, I guess so. You know, I always say, yeah, I always say, writers, you know, if we didn't get paid to do what we do, we'd be called schizophrenic. Right. You know, because <laughs> we have all these people in our heads, and you know, we, you know, I, I hear their voices just as as plainly as if I were watching them in a movie. You know. <laughs> and uh, Nikki is uh, she works in the Cold Case Squad, which uh, that's part of the story of this book. Right, they're, they're trying to solve a case from right. like 25 years before somebody got a police officer got murdered. Yeah, yeah, and uh, this is a, a newly formed cold case unit. Uh, as as happens in real life, it took the, the department getting a, a grant from the Department of Justice to set up a cold case unit. Not every city, not every uh, police department has a cold case dedicated cold case unit. Um, unlike what you see on television, you know, because <laughs> they're on taxpayer budget, so so they've just gotten this uh, grant to to start this small cold case unit, and and she's taken that uh, that task uh, so she can have a little bit more normal, or what she thinks will be more normal hours, because she's a single mom. And uh, the, the partner, he's working on a, a current case, right? Uh, two people get uh, murdered. <laughs> Yeah, Sam. Uh, Sam is breaking in a new partner in homicide, and which he's not happy about. Uh, but they uh, they catch a, a brutal, high-profile double homicide. A, a college professor and his wife are murdered in their home in a quite a, a spectacular fashion, and uh, and that's what they get to uh, sink their teeth into investigation-wise. You mentioned you know, the, the, the TV shows like Cold Case and NCIS and all that. People really are seemingly more fascinated today. There's always been crime shows on TV, but but more the I guess the ins and outs of how to solve. They solve them now, and that's part of what your your book gets into how they solve it. But people are really fascinated with it, aren't they? Yeah, they yeah they really are. I think um, I, I think you know, not, and not just in a fictional sense, but with the with the popularity of, of the cable networks, you know, Discovery, uh, ID, and, and uh, networks like that that show uh, actual, you know, true crime and, and how real crimes are solved as opposed to how things are, are solved in the fictitious television world, um, which is actually quite different. Right. Do you, do you have to do a lot of research, talk to police officers, or how do you do research? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've done a, a tremendous amount over the years of, uh, you know, interviewing detectives, doing ride-alongs, uh, you know, studying what they do, listening to them tell their stories about cases they've worked and uh, things of that nature. I just came back from uh, from doing a, a conference that's uh, held every year called Writers Police Academy, where yeah. where uh, writers go to an actual police academy and we are, you know, given instruction by the instructors there on, on uh, how 
crimes are investigated, how police work actually actually happens. You know, you're given the opportunity to, uh, you know, drive a police car, to uh, to shoot a weapon, to uh, do uh, shoot no shoot scenarios and things of that nature. And, uh, you know, uh, looking into forensics and all kinds of things like that, so that we can bring that kind of reality to our work. That would think now you have to be more accurate because the, the readers are more sophisticated nowadays, right? They've seen all this for years, so they point out stuff. I guess if you don't have it right, they're going to let you know, yeah. right? Yeah, the, the you know the the real the real hardcore dedicated um, you know suspense readers want want to see it done correctly. You know they they want to see police work as it as it really is, not you know not as as we might like it to be. You know, so we can right. solve a crime in an hour. And uh, yeah, so I, I I think it's it's important to me. I, I'll say that it's very, it's important to me to try to do justice to, to the the people who work these jobs that I'm writing about and, you know, to, to try to bring their humanity to, to the reader so they really understand what it's like to do that job. Yeah, not too many crimes are so solved in real life in, in whatever the, it is now, 44 minutes, right? Less commercial. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, it's really a, it's a fascinating story. Again, I don't want to give too much away, but it, it's uh, in your style with uh, a thrilling style and some twists and cliffhangers. I guess that's kind of a challenge, too, right, to come up with new uh, twists and cliffhangers each book, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. You know, I, I kind of I kind of just uh, you know throw it out there and, and hope the universe takes care of me, you know, provides me with some good twists and turns. Uh, Does it ever kind of um, change on you as you write? Like you think you go in one always. way, and then I've heard other authors say the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, always. It takes on life of its own. You know, I mean, I I don't write from an outline because that's just not my. That's not what works for me in terms of writing fiction. You know, I mean, I'll, I'll write an outline for a grocery list and <laughs> do a first draft and a revision and a, and a final draft. But when it comes to something that's you know really. Uh, creative when it comes to my work, I, I just can't do that. It doesn't work for me to do that. I, I want it to unfold organically as as I go. So it, it'll change. Uh, things change many, many times during the course of the book. I, I, I oftentimes won't really make up my mind and make a commitment to an outcome until I a absolutely have to. The name of the book is The Bitter Season, now out in uh, paperback, and uh, Tammy Hogue has been our guest, and uh, I guess you're always working on a, on a future story. Do you have one in the works that uh, you'll have one next year, I hope? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just getting going on it now. I, I took the summer to uh, move across country, which was, a, a, you know, right up there with being a victim of crime, I think, as far as stress goes. But, Not a lot of fun, I know. <laughs> but, uh, no, happy now to be settling and then getting back to work. Great. Tammy, you have a website you can direct people to as well. They can get more information about you in the book. Absolutely. TammyHogue.com. Uh, Facebook is uh, Facebook slash Tammy Hogue. And, uh, that's all my social media. Great. Tammy, pleasure talking to you. Hopefully we can do it again. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm Stan Brock. Thirty years ago, I formed Remote Area Medical to help people overseas. But then we found generations of families in America isolated by poverty from the health care they need. Together, we can take dental, vision, and medical help to a million adults and their kids right here at home in the United States of America. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, Please go to DougMilesMedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at DougMilesMedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or DougMilesMedia.